marriage, conflict, infidelity, and divorce, turning to salvation and restoration. Today we'll see how the broken marriage of Wayne and Debbie Melson, just days before the final divorce decree, is suddenly transformed by the power of God. She was married previously and so was I. When we met, it was, it was not under perfect conditions and we knew that. I was saved when I was six years old, grew up in the church, but then I married someone in the church when I was young who, when my first child was coming, told me that he didn't even believe in God. I lived um, a hell on earth for about 11 years and God gifted me with these three beautiful little girls and we, we lived in turmoil. And when I met my shining knight here, I thought, okay, well, this is great. The difficult part was is when you know God and you have Him in you, you know when you're making a mistake. I knew better when I married Wayne because I knew the things he didn't know about God, and I knew I was being disobedient. And the way I felt when Wayne left was I'd gotten exactly what I asked for. Our life was a wreck. Uh, or should I say my life was a wreck. There wasn't a foundation there. There was no, um, no direction from God. We were just falling apart. I started telling Debbie, you know, that I didn't love her, and that I probably never loved her from the beginning, uh, which was a total, (laughs) which was a a total, a total outright lie, because I knew the feelings that I truly had for her, but I had wronged her so many times that I had to make it someone else's fault other than my own, and of course the girls um, heard that. I did adore my stepfather, um, and played with him. You know, we played basketball. I was more the outside girl, so more like the boy that he didn't have. We played together a lot, um, which in turn, um, you know, made things harder for me later on. We knew they weren't happy. We knew stuff was going on. We didn't know what. We um, were protected at the time from it, which was probably good because we were very young and impressionable. It affected me huge, and I was, um, you know, really bitter, very, um, didn't have much forgiveness or mercy or compassion for um, his situation or for my mom's. I was kind of more self-centered and worried about myself. In May of 1993, uh, we were separated, uh, not living together. Actually, I was living in an apartment at the time. Should have been nice. I mean, I had everything I wanted, right? I could go do what I wanted. My life was free. I had freedom to do what I wanted. I was a well-looked-up-to person in in my profession, and um, I was very successful in what I did. I was fun. People liked me. but inside, like I said, I was just, I was miserable. I was really, and I was always looking for something else. I remember the day that my parents were splitting up. I remember it well because we were going to Galveston on a trip, like, we're supposed to go as a family, and my dad wasn't going to go. And I didn't understand. I guess it really got rough when, um, my dad left our house, um, you know, as a self-absorbed teenager um, in your senior year, you want the world to revolve around you, and quite frankly, it was not, so that was really hard. I remember him moving out, and it was, it was hard, but we were okay with it. Um, we had been done wrong a lot, you know, by men <laughs> when we were younger, and so we just basically told mom, fine, you know what, we girls are strong, and we can be together, and it'll be just the four of us, and we will be a-okay and we don't need any, any men around, we're gonna do just fine. I remember I was in junior high and I had had a friend whose parents had divorced. I felt um, a lot of the same ways they felt, the betrayal and things of that, but I, but also there was kind of a nor- like parents being divorced at that age where I was, a lot of people's parents were being divorced. There was still a feeling of this isn't how it's supposed to be. I shouldn't have built my trust and my faith and my hope up in a man should have built it in the God that I knew. I was gonna be fine. I sat down with the girls and I said, girls, you know, I made a mistake. I shouldn't have married him. And, you know, I'm sorry. I I didn't make a good choice for us. But we're gonna be okay because I'm putting my life back together and I'm gonna follow God. And our life is gonna be different. Well, as you can imagine, my daughters were like, okay, mom, whatever. You're going through a hard time, whatever. Five days away from getting a divorce, That night in the apartment, um, I just cried out to God, and I asked Christ to come into my life and to forgive me of my sins, just to cleanse me. Uh, 
and make me whole again. Immediately, um, God came into my life and I felt this cleansing. And I felt a peace that I, I, I've never had before. I just made up my mind. I thought, you know, the next day I'm going to go see Debbie and I'm going to tell her I'm going to put my life back together. And so I had seen this brochure um, that said, Sage Mark Church, we do church differently. And I thought to myself, well, that's the church I'm going to go to. And I'm going to go there and I'm going to put my family back together. And so I went to Debbie the next day. I walked up to her and, of course, she was none too happy to see me. And uh, I told her, I said that uh, I had given my life to Christ and that uh, I wanted to put our family back together. And that we were going to start doing that by going to Sage Mark Church. And I'd seen this brochure. And so she pulled out the same brochure that I had gotten. And she said, you mean this? And I said, yes. I said, that's it. When Wayne came that day, it was actually the day Vanessa was graduating from high school. And he said, can we ride together? And I was like, oh yeah, like the happy family. Sure, you know, <laughs> what do you want? And he told me, he said, I've made a change in my life. And I just, oh, I just got a sick feeling in my stomach. I was like, right, this is the biggest lie ever. This is the one lie that I would choose to believe more than any is that he had truly given his life over to God. It didn't take me very long to figure out that he really had. We slowly started putting things back together and she agreed to let me come home, reluctantly, I must say, because I had given her a lot of reasons um, uh, uh, not to do that. I had been unfaithful and, and my life just wasn't where I knew it should be. Mom sat us down, well she said that she wanted to go to church and that she was, um, you know, she just really was convicted about the fact that she hadn't been raising us like she knew she was supposed to, you know, and that um, she wanted to take us to a new church and that dad was gonna go. When she finally decided that she wanted him to come back, we weren't all that excited. <laughs> I mean, you know, I, I didn't care one way or the other. You know, I think Vanessa was probably less excited about that. <laughs> Very bitter. I was extremely upset. I thought she had lost her mind. Um, how could she let him come in here and treat us like this again? What if this is a recurring thing? Um, how do you know someone's changed? How do you know there's something different? So it was very difficult for me and I was not ready for him to come back. I just was not. I very much expressed that to them pretty plain and bluntly and, and not very nicely or respectfully either I feel like at that time which you know I'm ashamed of now as an adult but hey you know that's where I was. I was glad that you know, it seemed like dad was trying, but I didn't know how real it was at the time. And I was very skeptical. We started going to church and I was like a sponge. I mean, I was just soaking up everything that I could get. And when I walked into church and I'd sit in that auditorium and I'd listen to the word of God and I'd, I'd listen to the choir and singing those hymns of praises and, and I would just bawl my eyes out. But it was a cleansing for me. It was just, I mean, immediately, it, I just felt I was a different person. And Wayne began to study the Word of God and he would come home and he would say, did you know about this man named Daniel? And I would just start crying and say, yes, I knew about Daniel. <laughs> it was beautiful because I'd been in church most of my life, but to witness such a true salvation, a person whose language, their spirit, their atmosphere, their jokes, everything about them completely changed. I knew that before me, God had given me a miracle. And, and I was taking it, kicking and screaming. It was very hard to accept. A minister, Andy Cherry, who was on the counseling staff at our church, he told me one day, he said, why are you trying to trust him? You shouldn't trust him. He's given you nothing to trust. He said, stop trying to trust him and just trust God. He said, and you know, you need to accept this miracle. He said, you're kind of like Jacob just fighting with God because you can't accept what you have here. I was making a decision not just for myself, but for my daughters for the third time to trust someone enough to bring them back into our home. That's a huge responsibility for a woman. And I needed help with that. If Andy Cherry had not been there, and I don't know how I could have made this. You know, God put him there for me. He knew what I needed to hear. He knew I needed someone who would look me in the face because I'm a very strong person and say, do you get it? You know, he's given you a miracle. Will you take it? I really lived a life of independence and, you know, I worked all the time and I didn't even depend on him as a leader at all. I was taking care of myself. 
Not only was I not depending on God, I wasn't depending on my husband. And then I really felt like I couldn't depend on my husband, you know. And I never thought there would be a day where I love submitting to my husband. I love just calling and saying, what do you think? What should we do? He's my best friend. After he started coming to Sage Mount, he got saved and got baptized. And that changed my relationship with him and changed my life. Watching um, him change um, affected me so deeply that it caused me to want what he had. And watching him change was like um, a modern day miracle. I mean, a person that truly accepts Christ turns from their wicked ways and starts walking that straight and narrow. That's what he did. When my husband and I met, he was making a change in his life and he had found Christ and he, he was making changes. And I was actually able to accept that. I was actually able to see that of him and actually believe it because I had seen, foresaw it in my father's life. He loves my mother. I truly believe that and I truly believe, you know, he's in it for the long haul <laughs> with all of us. I trust him now, which is, which is a tough thing and thought would never happen, but I do and I adore him. He's a wonderful man. The difference of having Christ as the foundation is that even when tough things come up, and believe me, we've had tough things. We've had many Real tough hard things. things we've had to walk um, through. You know, without Christ and without forgiveness and grace, uh, uh, there's no there's no way that you make that. People see us at church and they'll say, "Wow, Christmas Eve, our children and our grandchildren are there," and they'll say, "Wow, you guys did a great job." raising your kids and we just chuckle and say sit down and let me tell you a story of grace do not underestimate god you know it's only god that changes the minds of men a woman cannot do it she needn't try she's she's going to make him worse this man was as gone as they could be if you trust him whether he comes back or he doesn't come back god is the one to put your faith your hope your trust in he should be where your joy is built, not on an earthly man. Most people, they just, they just go, you know, great, that's another chapter in my life. It's over. It's done. I've I got to tell you, hang in there, you know, don't give up, and, and look to God. You know, He's our true Savior. He's our, he's our true Father. And, and uh, you know, when you need a big shoulder, you know, to put your head on sometimes, and even men need that, you know, uh, we've got a big God. And... Uh, if you truly cry out to Him and truly, truly, you know, ask for Him to come into your heart and, and to, to uh, cleanse it and to cleanse your body and to, um, you know, ask Him to be the Lord and Savior of your life, uh, He'll He'll do it. Uh, but be ready because uh, He does it in a in a powerful way, powerful way. You too can experience God's transformation. Just call the number on your screen. There are friends waiting to talk to you about how Christ can change your life. You can also call that same number for more information about Sagemont Church.